Now we turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. This is our first session. To this end, we'll come back and ask what that is. We always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, show us now to what end Paul is praying, what it signifies and teaches us that he is praying, what the calling is, and what it is to be worthy of this calling. Show us these things. Help us to live these things. Walk in these things by faith, I pray in your power. In Jesus' name, amen. To this end, literally unto which, and it could refer back to the end that he just mentioned, or it could be forward. If we go back, what do we see? We see when he comes to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at in all who have believed. So the end is that we would be fit to marvel. At him and thus glorify him at his coming. To that end, he's praying. Is that what he means? Or, lots of people think it refers forward to this right here. To what end do I pray? Namely, that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power. And grammatically, both are perfectly legitimate. So which is it? Well, here's the interesting thing. The purpose of this that clause here that he's praying for is this. So that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, which is exactly what he has just said. He's going to come to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at in all who have believed. To that end, I pray this, which is exactly what he says here. I pray this to this end. So I don't think Paul means for us to choose. I think the end is the same. Whether you mean this way or that way, the end is the same. And this is simply the means in the middle of the two ends. The end back this way is Christ will be glorified, when our people are of such a, a quality of faith that they marvel when he comes rather than being terrified when he comes. And I pray this so that the name of the Lord Jesus will be glorified in you and you in him. So that's my answer to the question, what does this end refer to? And here's the interesting thing, or another interesting thing. He's praying for the purpose that has been expressed In the preceding verse. And that's a good way to define our prayers. Some people might, in a superficial, seemingly logical way, say, Well, if he's coming to be glorified and to be marveled at, it's going to happen. We don't need to pray for it. You don't need to pray for this marveling to happen in the Thessalonians. Baloney, you don't. He does. Because God has ordained that his highest purpose has happened through prayer. I mean, what does the Lord's Prayer mean when it says, Lord, teach us to pray, and the first thing he teaches is, pray for this, hallowed be your name. Well, if God is committed to any purpose in the universe, it is the hallowing of his name. And so if you want to play that logic game, you can say, well, if God's purpose is to hallow his name, we don't need to pray for his name to be hallowed. Yes, we do. So, He is praying here for the purposes of God, because God has ordained that his purposes, his highest purposes, come to pass through prayer. And the other reason that prayer is so crucial here is that all of this making of you worthy of his calling is going to happen by his power. And that's the only way it's going to happen, and the way you bring the power of God to bear upon our lives is to pray. Now, what is the prayer that we be worthy of his calling 
We pray that God would make you worthy of his calling. What is this calling? In the next chapter, we see a picture of it like this. 2 Thessalonians 2, 13-14. We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and in belief in the truth. To this, what's this? To that salvation, through that sanctification, and through that belief in the truth, to this he called you through our gospel, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus. So this that he called us to is salvation through sanctification, through belief. Here it is again in 1 Thessalonians 2. We exhorted each one of you and encouraged you and charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God who calls you to his own kingdom and glory. So that's what the salvation is headed for. He called us to be saved through sanctification, to be saved for his kingdom, for his glory, through sanctification. And here it is now in 1 Thessalonians 4, where we see sanctification. For God has not called us to impurity, but for holiness, in holiness, that is, sanctification. So, to this he called you means he called you to be saved. He called you to be saved not through impurity, but in sanctification or holiness and belief in the truth, and that will take you to his kingdom and his glory. So, he's praying here in our text, verses 11 and 12, to this end we ought always to pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling, calling to salvation, calling to sanctification, calling to holiness, calling to move towards his kingdom and his glory through faith. Now, what does it mean that he is going to make you worthy of that calling? And we've seen this before. To make worthy of something God has already done decisively, unilaterally, omnipotently, decisively, namely, call us out of darkness into light and to his kingdom, what it means to make us worthy of that is not that we become deserving of it. We didn't deserve it before it happened. We don't deserve it now. What, what does it mean? It means to become suited, fitted, appropriate for it. It's the way the word worthy is used. We've seen it several times in the Thessalonian epistles. And here would be an example. 2 Thessalonians 1, 5, just a few verses earlier, seven verses earlier. This, namely the endurance of affliction, is evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. The suffering here, the affliction in the preceding verses, is designed by God to knock the edges of unbelief and unholiness off of our lives so that we are fitted, fitted and made suited for the kingdom of God. Or the way it says here, may he make you worthy of his calling. And I think this and here is how it's going to happen. He's going to fulfill good resolves or resolves for good. He's going to bring about works of faith by his power. We don't become deserving. Undeserving people get power through faith. Now, we're going to pick it up there next time. But let's just review here. The end to which he is aiming is this glorified in you and you in him, which we saw also in the preceding verses. And he prays that purpose of God down into reality. And he does it by asking God by his power through our faith to make us suited or fitted for the calling 
to salvation through sanctification, namely his kingdom and his glory.